Hello YouTube. It's another one of these videos. Eh? Let's use let's use their finger. So anyways, it's you know about Well, let's get a different one. Unless you're gonna try and go for that one. You might have trouble. She shouldn't have grabbed it by the finger, but anyways. So let's start off with trying to feed her. Come on. You know you want it. There you go. Anyways, this creature currently eating is Sif, the Australian barking gecko. I've had her for a while now, and we're gonna make a video on care. That's a dead plant that I need to remove, but I'm letting it decay. Anyways, this is her tank. It's an 18 by 18 by 12. This is the gecko. She's currently hungry. It's about 1 a.m. where I am, and I'm not feeling it. But since I have no concept of time, I've decided to make a video at this time. And you know what? You know what? It's not normally bright in the room, but I turn the lights. Uh, normally, she has lights on during the day. Not normally. Is that normally? What's normal, the day or the night? Anyways, surprise intro from Kaya. But anyways, today we're going to talk about these geckos. This is a gecko. Scientific name. Under Underwoodosaurus Meli, yeah, un Underwoody Saurus, isn't that a cool name? They're related to to knobtail geckos, but you know, not in the same like Nephruus genus or whatever. They're in their own little genus. Only one other gecko's in their genus, if I remember correctly, and it's similar to these guys. But you know, they're called Australian bark geckos because they usually bark. She doesn't. Well, bark more like scream, but she doesn't. She used to. If you go on my Instagram, you'll see an old video of her screaming. And she's pretty big now. These guys, the females are bigger than males usually. They can get from like, can I do math? Yeah, it's like four to six inches is how big they can get from like head to tail. She's a pretty big girl, honestly. Now, for the rundown of, first I'm going to start off with what you feed. You should probably feed them, well the insects I feed for example are crickets, doobie roaches, they can eat mealworms. I would not recommend mealworms. Occasionally, I she would eat um, waxworms, so they can eat those like treats. Same for small hornworms as treats. Same for small silkworms as treats, and same for small butterworms, calcium, etc. Well, calcium you can feel, but she's never been a fan of them, so I don't really give none of my geckos are a fan of those, so I don't really give them very often. Now, as for care, I she has a warm hide right here, right here. You see, that's at about 85 degrees with a heat pad. You can use a ceramic heat emitter if you want. I've seen her basking back when I used one. So, you can see her slinking around back there. So yeah. Um, as an adult, I feed her twice a week and she does fine. You can feed probably more often because I gave her like two big feedings a week. You could probably do multiple smaller feedings if you want or, or something. As for substrate, um, I would honestly say you ha you should go, like, loose. You can do sand if you want. I used to do a sand mix with her, like, sand mixed with dirt. Now I use, like, the bio dude, um, dirt, because I didn't feel like making make my own. I just bought it, and it worked for you. Oh, hey, look. Whatever, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get you later. <laughs> a guy is hungry. A guy who wants food, and a guy who saw me feed sip, and now he's jealous. Anyways, anyways... So, for, I, I keep a humid hide. Yeah, I, I love these hides, honestly. I have one for, like, my, um, a few of my geckos. I have one for my Central American Banded, and then, and then one for my Leopard Gecko as well. I'll probably get one for my, um, what's another one that might need it? I'll probably get one for Gaia as well, once I get Gaia a bigger tank. But Gaia's chilling. He has his little plastic thing. It works. I'd get one for Odin, but Odin's just too tiny, dog. Then sh this itself is a hide. You you can see down there. You can, she can burrow under there, and then and she does regularly. I keep her in a bioactive tank, or whatever. So as I keep most of my geckos, or at least I try to. Um, what a that that plant. Ugh, ugh. It used to be nicer, but it's honestly, I'm bad at keeping plants alive. I try my best, but I'm just bad at it. Aside from that, humidity, I would keep humidity similar to like a leopard gecko, you know, like 
between 20 to 40% humidity. You can go down to 10, I guess. Um, cage size, no smaller than 10 gallon. Even I argue that that's not big enough, but plenty of people keep them in 10 gallons all their lives and they do fine, I suppose. But I keep her in 18 by 18 by 12. Let's see, Gaia sees it. We'll see. Okay, it's gone. Anyways, it's feeding night for these geckos, so they're all on edge. That's why I felt like feeding her, cause she, cause I knew she'd be. That's why I felt like doing this, cause I knew she'd be out tonight. Then, what else have I missed? Have I missed anything? Um, handling, handling. As you saw, she's pretty good at handling. If you want an Australian gecko, that's <laughs> if you want an Australian gecko that's easily handleable. Well, not easily handled, but that's able to be handled. I'd say the barking gecko is your best bet because knob toe geckos, at least in my experience, are not very prone to being handled. They don't like it. Like my knob tail hates being handled, but she's such a calm gecko. I honestly love her. Then I also call him the poor man's knob tail because even though it's, she was expensive, she was $150. And I think that's like the average price. It's still cheap compared to a knob tail, which can be like, at a minimum, like a hunt, like two hundred to one hundred fifty dollars as well, but she, but they can be like a hundred to one hundred fifty for like a normal one of these, and they're a much nice one. You can so I keep mine alone, but from what I know, you can keep these cohabitated in like groups of females and maybe one male. So it's like two to three females of one male i know that's what breeders do i don't quote me on it if you can do it for if you can do it normally but i know that's how breeders keep their geckos sometimes then another thing about these guys is they're from australia so they're a pretty unique looking gecko see that tail it's similar to lever geckos where they store all their fat in that so if they ever need to they can drop it to run away but they shouldn't and and there's will regrow. Unlike New Caledonian geckos, there there's will regrow. Also, dog, you've missed that twice. See, they're not the most graceful of hunters possible. Um, what else is there? I'm trying to think. Uh, I think that's the basics, honestly. So to sum it up, I feed crickets, dubias, and I don't feel nervous, but I I feed crickets and dubias. Make sure to dust like you do all geckos, you know. Dust with like multivitamins and calcium. I keep mine in 18 by 18 by 12. I recommend no no less than a 15 to no less than a 10 to 15 gallon. Keep humidity at around 10 to 40 percent. Keep their uh make sure they have a warm spot of about 85 to 88 degrees. Make sure they're when, once they're adults, you can feed them about two to three times a week. They're also not eyelid geckos, another thing. Instead, they lick their eyes like other geckos, which I also think is pretty cool. They're just cool geckos in general. I, I really recommend them if, you, if, you're ever, if you're getting into geckos and you want one that's like unique but has the care of a leopard gecko, that's honestly what she is. She's such an iconic little gecko. I just love her. Anyways, that's the rundown of my gecko. Also, from what I from what I've experienced, they are not very prone to stuck toe shed like leopard geckos are. So that's a plus. They aren't all weird like that. Oh, look at her. She's so alien when walking. You're so cool. So you can see her little shed paws. I have to pull those out. But yeah, such a cool little gecko. It's yeah, and they all have like unique patterns on their backs. Honestly. But yeah, I appreciate my geckos, and um, yeah, this is the basic care of an underwoody saurus milli. Oh, amazing, amazing gecko. Anyways, my 1.30 a.m. video is done, and I will be uploading this around this time, which is also pretty cool.